so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, brought to you today for the first time on iPhones, Android, Palm Pre, and BlackBerry by the Stitcher app for mobile devices and by 1-800-DialDJs.com. If you need live entertainment for your party, wedding, bar mitzvah, or corporate event in the New York, New Jersey, or Philadelphia metro areas, check out 1-800-DialDJs.com or call 1-800-DialDJs for a real good time. So where was I before the commercial? Oh, yeah. Mr. Media is recorded live from the new new media capital of the world and home of the Sticks of Fire blog and Foursquare Day creator Bill Kaysen, Tampa Bay, Florida. Get to know me. <laughs> That's one of the conceits of an online social networking service. I'm someone you should get to know, and by so doing, you will improve your standing in life, members of the opposite sex will find you more attractive, and, and your food will taste better. Now, I can't swear that any of that is true, but it is the general idea. Now, whether you've dabbled in Facebook, the gold standard in social media, or MySpace, its trailer trash cousin, you've probably already discovered some of the advantages to be gained by reconnecting with friends and family or being introduced to new acquaintances. But what about your career? Well, there are limited opportunities to expand your job horizons and opportunities on Facebook. I can tell you firsthand that the place you really need to be is LinkedIn. I've used LinkedIn for several years and, I'm proud of this, have 1,401 business connections on the network. And this guy on the phone today, he might be the N1. But my experience pales next to, the, next to that of Mike O'Neill. He is a LinkedIn superstar, a man with 28,000 connections, enough to rank him 24th worldwide. He is also the author of Rock the World with Your Online Presence, a rock and roll theme primer to getting the most from your LinkedIn experience. Mike, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, thank you, Bob. Mr. Media! How you doing? Terrific, terrific. We're getting ready to go out on a national tour. It's our Rock the World National National Tour 2010. So we start out in, uh, we go to Chicago, then Atlanta, and uh, there's about 12 dates on the tour so far. I'm, I've announced actual actual dates for about half of them. It's like a rock concert. And so uh, if people are interested in seeing you live, where can they go to get that information? Rocktheworldbook.com rocktheworldbook.com. There's a tab called the tour, uh, kind of a navigation tab called the tour. And uh, okay. we've got, uh, uh, I think Char- Charlotte is as well, and Minneapolis might be, uh, might be announced as well with uh, registrations up there. All right. Well, Mike, for people who are overwhelmed by the growing number of social networks uh, on the Internet, can you explain what sets LinkedIn apart? Well, LinkedIn, I don't, I don't throw LinkedIn in the category with the social networks. In fact, all of our marketing and branding is LinkedIn and social media because uh, it's becoming more social. They've added some new features just, just right. in the last couple of days. I've right? seen some of those things. They're looking at what Facebook's doing because people are spending a lot of time on Facebook, hours on Facebook. In LinkedIn, people come in on LinkedIn. They establish their credibility. They find the resources they're going to use, and then they move on. There aren't many people like me who live in LinkedIn all the, all the time with multiple tabs open and all this stuff going on. I'm an unusual animal. Hmm. So I think um, what you're saying here is that it's, it's the kind of thing that you use situationally. If you're looking for work or expanding your, your opportunities, you'd go to LinkedIn. But it's not like Facebook where you're going to be on there all the time, at least most people. Yeah, you're not monitoring feeds, and, and you're not interrupted by, by mafia wars and farm vills and all these things that this big vacuum cleaner just sucking your time. LinkedIn's <laughs> actually a really easy program to use, Bob. So easy, even you and I can use it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it goes back to the days of basic databases. If you ever, if the people that, that used to have modems and log into bulletin boards are really comfortable with LinkedIn because there's fields and there aren't little hieroglyphic icons all over the place and there aren't things popping up in front of you that are not relevant. It's all about business. And in fact, it's really about B2B business, Bob. So, uh, I mean, you know, who is going to benefit from being on LinkedIn? I mean, and who is not? Oh, that's a, that, that's a really, really good question. The folks that benefit the most are recruiters first. 
because there's a great talent pool out there. They're probably the ones who benefit the most. In fact, if you took LinkedIn away from a recruiter, and uh, you're going to really, really get chased down the hall. You're going to get the whips coming out if you ta- go to take LinkedIn away from a recruiter and have them to try to be competitive with, with other people. Of the top 50 people on LinkedIn, of which I'm right around 24, 25 in that range, I kind of go up and down because I'm deleting people from my network now to make room for new people. I'm, I'm about ready to max out. Of those top 50 people, uh, there are two women and two-thirds of them are recruiters, two-thirds hmm. of the, the top 50. That, that says something. So uh, let's talk about your own experience. When did it first click for you uh, to use LinkedIn and, and to really use it like crazy? And I'll tell you, as you th- think for a minute, uh, I began using it. I think I had gotten an account early on and then couldn't really figure out how to apply it. And then there was a story in the old Business 2.0 magazine that just kind of uh, turned the light bulb on for me and made me go, oh, that's what it's for. And since then, I found it very useful. But, I mean, you've taken it beyond most people. Why? I mean, where, where, where were you at in your career when you first discovered this service? Well, it, it was 2004, actually January 14th, 2004, where someone invited me to join LinkedIn. You know, mm-hmm. most, most people really decide they're going to join LinkedIn because someone that they kind of know and trust has pushed them over the edge that they finally accepted an invitation and in the process of doing so, got prompted to create a profile and join the LinkedIn community. Well, I, I am seeing people actually go to LinkedIn.com and sign up, but that's a lot more rare than the actual concept of, of being brought in by somebody, and usually somebody that you trust and that you know. Because mm-hmm. I'll bet I've got hit by, oh, a dozen or so LinkedIn invitations to join before I accepted one, and the one I accepted was, like, like from I believe it was from Dave Taylor, one of the one of the sure. sharpest social media guys I know in, in the whole world. In fact, he wrote the, the foreword to our Rock the World uh, LinkedIn book. Sure. Um, People who have been online a while know Dave's name. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Dave's a rocker, too. He's in Boulder. One of the coolest guys in the world. And, and, and uh, I think I accepted his invitation. And, and I, like a lot of people, I didn't do much for a little while. I, I think it was probably a year before I really did much. So now we're at 2005. Still real early, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Facebook, you have to have a, a .edu address to play in Facebook. MySpace is the big daddy on the, in the world right there. And, I, you know, I thought MySpace was kind of consumerish, and LinkedIn looked very B2B-ish, and I liked that a lot. And we were running a, a, a B2B networking event business. We were doing monthly networking events and even, in some cases, weekly events, making a decent living because, you know, sponsor dollars existed back in 2005. Mm-hmm. And we, we decided we kind of wanted to do something for our, our, our peers out there, because I'm a peer with the chamber heads and the folks who run a lot of other associations. And we have these events that now kind of look like LinkedIn Live events. Like, events are so popular nowadays, and, but we kind of pioneered them here in, in Colorado. And I, I wanted to get all of the event managers together for something, some unifying event. That's, our, that's what Integrated Alliances is all about. Our logo, our persona is the unification. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of kicked around ideas. We ended up with the idea that we do a LinkedIn training. And I actually hired Dave, Dave Taylor to, uh, to be the instructor for the first event, and he did a great job. But I wanted to take it into a real educational way. The feedback was that that was really interesting, but I need to know where to click and what to do. I need to be educated, not just excited. Mm-hmm. And that was 400 training sessions ago. We're probably closer to 450 now. Because I did, we did, we've done ten trainings just last week. We did ten trainings between wow. evenings and weekends, and and, the, and these sort of things. This counts as a training. Right? We're at, people are going to get good content out of this, out of this, Bob. <laughs> and you know, I, this is funny. As as we're talking, I've I've got LinkedIn open in front of me, and <laughs> Dave Taylor showed up <laughs> under people you may know. Uh, he's the second uh, connection. I wonder who I'm connected to him through. I'm going to take a peek now. Yeah, why don't you click on it? It might be me. I'm one of them, I'm sure. Let's, let's see. Uh, no, but it's a – well, well it's, okay, there's three, four, five. There's 14 people. And, yeah, you're one. It, listen, folks, if you don't know Dave Taylor, this is the company the man is in. Uh, Mike O'Neill, who's on the phone with us, Chris Brogan, Rick Calvert, uh, Lori Ruff, who is uh, Mike's partner, uh, Jim Turner, uh, Stan Relihan. Bill Price, Des Walsh. These are people, a lot of these people that I know uh, directly or certainly by uh, uh, reputation, Adam Angst, uh, Bill Austin I know, 
Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, and so, you know, I don't know why it just happened at this moment that his name popped up. I'm actually connect, connected with him on other networks. There's something divine about that, Bob. You pay attention to these little divine interventions that happen in life. Um, we, we picked up on that. In fact, we, I've been writing this LinkedIn book for three years. I've been writing it, writing it. And it was this arduous process because LinkedIn's always changing. And, and you know, the, the, the book was going to go in the direction of a uh, 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 sales and marketing using LinkedIn guide. And there was so much material. I don't want a book that's three inches thick. I, don't, I can't read that. I don't, I don't read those books. I don't buy those books. And my audience doesn't either. We need something that's quick and snappy. One, two, three page sections, bang, I got it done and go ahead. And when we ended up just focusing in on the first step, which is LinkedIn profiles. And, and when I talk about paying attention to things, we're listening to the radio while it's going on. And I had this epiphany while I'm working on the, the account setting section where you set what you want set to you and all. And Pink Floyd, Welcome to the Machine is on the radio. We've always got the radio on to inspire us. And, and I went to bed that night, and I got up in the middle of the night, and I wrote a little note, and I kind of went rock and, 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 and a few little notes that I could barely read. I think I've still got the piece of paper somewhere. It'll go on the wall. And we ended up the next day combining rock and roll inspiration and my knowledge of that industry. I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a rocker. I've been to a 1,000 concerts. I, I, I know what it's like to be a consumer of the concert experience, actually a leader in that and we combine them together. And I'll tell you, we got that book. All of a sudden, when you're inspired by something, you just go for it. I, I, I pulled all-nighters, and I didn't even know it. All sunshine's <laughs> coming up. And it's, wow, this is so fun. Why is, why is rock and roll the appropriate uh, connection for you to make uh, with LinkedIn? A lot of people are probably a little baffled by that, although the superstar aspect certainly makes sense. Well, it, it's, it's genuine to me. I mean, I, I, if, if I, couldn't, I couldn't say, well, let's slap a symphony or let's slap a, 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 a mountain biking, you know, brand around this thing. Um, that's what I am anyway. So if you kind of really want to be really genuine, and, and social media is really about being genuine, about being yourself, you can get exposed pretty quickly. If, uh, if you're, you know, if I'm not a hiker and I'm talking about being the, the best hiker, you know, da-da-da, there is out here, it's... It, I'm going to get exposed. And in this particular case, what I discovered is when, when people think about music, particularly live music, when you're talking mm -hmm. tickets, it just butters them up. They just get all, all giddy. It's like, oh, the best time I ever had was at this or at that. And while we're there at these shows, look around. <clears throat> there are LinkedIn users all over. There are Facebook users. There's Twitter users. People are tweeting. People are making friends, joining groups. This is my, my audience. My clients are here at these concerts. I make a business case that, uh, you know, if I go where clients are I'm, I'm, and get to know them better and, and they get to kind of like what I have going on, guess what? We've got some unbelievable education called LinkedIn training that goes back 400 sessions. We've got it really superly refined. And, and, and it, it, it naturally kind of sprinkles with a lot of the lyrics and songs. Mm-hmm. Um, the, now, the, the names of songs like um, like uh, "Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow" is 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 a is a, a phrase that we use in our training to kind of get people inspired. And we talk about how you, you you keep updating things because it's always about tomorrow. It's not about what's in the past. LinkedIn's about the future. Mm -hmm. well, uh, how has being in, so involved in LinkedIn affected your business, your company? Well, I've. I, I can't imagine a life without it. Uh, I've been so involved with it and so ingrained in it for so long. It, it just really is, is, a, is a, a funky thing to think about being without it. Um, I'm so glad it's available on the iPhone, although I wish it worked better. Uh, there are some <laughs> issues with it. You, you experience those, Bob? Uh, I have a uh, T-Mobile, My uh, what is it called? My phone. I think that's what it's called, My phone. And, yeah, I'm not real impressed with it on there either. Here, here's what happens, Bob. The... Uh, the, the data bandwidth between the carriers, I'm from the telecom industry, so I kind of know, I was a sales engineer, I, I, I've been in a lot of data centers where you've got to wear sweaters all day because it's 65 degrees to keep the routers cold. And the, the, the interface in between the AT&T network and LinkedIn, the pipe's not big enough. They're like on a T1 and they need a DS3. They're on a, they're on a 100 meg connection, they need a 1000 meg connection. The, 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 there just isn't a big enough pipe there and, and they need to... 
need to build that up because you know, I'm always getting these error fetching data messages, and then eventually some things kind of clear out. But what, it, it, it's universal. But what you talk about in your show that's so great is this is going handheld. That's where the world's going with this stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not sitting at my desk at my laptop very often, and when I am, I'm doing something else. I want to do my social media stuff is almost real time for me. For most people, though, LinkedIn is kind of like email. You can do it at night when you when it when it it's convenient for you. You can pick up on it. It's batch oriented and it's asynchronous. It's not real time. For most people, I'm different because I'm in the business of LinkedIn. It's different for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what mistakes do you find that people commonly make in, in trying to set up a LinkedIn account and make it effective? They don't do a great profile before they get, get going. Um, they, they, they jump in, they put in the minimal amount of information, and they just dive on in without realizing that, you, that when people are interacting with you out there, they're looking mm-hmm. at your profile to see how worthy you are of their attention because, frankly, there's a lot of competition for everyone's attention. And your profile says, I'm worthy of your time and your attention, or it doesn't. And somewhere in between is where most people are. And we wrote the book to make sure people get all the respect and attention that they deserve. Bob, I sent you a copy. It's, it's a, it's a kicking book. <laughs> yes, I have it in front of me. Uh, but you know, so. But what I'm saying is, now I teach. Let me give you an example. I teach a social media for beginners class. A lot of parents, not necessarily people who are likely to use LinkedIn, for example. However, they have the same kind of questions that, that these people would have. Is I don't understand it. They look at it and they're out of work. I, I'll give you a better example. Uh, my brother-in-law was out of work last year for for many months, and professional guy. And he just looked at LinkedIn, and you know, people were telling him that he could use it, do this with it. It just kind of confuses them. I mean, it's just not, uh, you know. So what I'm saying is, you know, what kind of simple things can they do to make it more effective for them? Well, the the, the first step I, I mentioned about profiles, we built that one up. We have built a methodology that's a a four plus one sort of step methodology. And if I kind of step you through it a little bit. I think it'll open up the eyes to people. This is a this is a pretty meaty part part um, when we speak and train around the country. So once you get your profile looking up pretty good, now it's time to go share your share yourself with the world to invite people and to really open yourself up to being invited to go get those hundreds or thousands or maybe tens of thousands of connections over some period of time. And and in the LinkedIn world, what you're doing is you're basically building traffic. For, for you inbound, and you're uh, uh, enabling yourself to go find more when you go look. Mm-hmm. Kind of like if I'm, I've got, I got time tonight, what am I going to do? Isn't it nice that there's three concerts to choose from instead of, well, you know, not much going on tonight, because you're not plugged in. You don't have a lot of options. And he who has the most options usually wins. <laughs> so the second step is to build your network. And there's ways to do that through tools and methodologies and all to do that either in a very targeted way where I want just these kind of people. An executive is that way. If I'm an executive at Quest, I'm going to keep my network kind of tight, but I've got to keep my options open because I might not, you know, my company's merging with CenturyTel today, and my, my, my job might be gone. That's, a, that's an announcement today. There's some Quest people kind of nervous today. Yeah. So, so I've got to keep my, my network going, but I, you know, I don't want to open it up so that all the vendors and job seekers just flood my, my LinkedIn inbox with requests on feeding me, want to feed off me. So, so that's one kind. Another kind of person is a sales rep. I mentioned recruiters were number one. The number two audience out here are folks involved in revenue production, sales and marketing people. Job seekers are, in, are, are mixed in all this, whole, this, whole, this whole process here as well, but it's primarily revenue generation has, has an ROI. I find a new customer on LinkedIn, woo, there we go, that's ROI. And for most people, LinkedIn is free, so it's pretty easy to get an ROI on hard dollars. Where the ROI comes down to is, I have it's it's time. I only have so much time. So the second component of the methodology is building your network. Get your profile going. Get your network going. Now that I've got a good sized network, now it, the fun really starts. You know, it, it really starts at 500 connections. If you're below 500, um, that you're not enjoying as much. You're, you got to you got to uh, a reserve seat up on the hill. You want to get down front and really see the band. So mm-hmm. that's where it gets kind of kind of good is when you get into that 500, 1,000, 2,000 connection range. 
I got something to search on now. If I go search on LinkedIn, I'm going to get some pretty good results because my network's big enough. And when I go search and find these people, that's step three, the search and find. Step four is to actually engage them. And LinkedIn gives me options other than picking up the phone or sending an email. I can do, I can communicate through LinkedIn to these folks and there's different strategies. I might get introduced through somebody or I might go direct and send a message. I might invite them. The different options I have depend on whether I'm already connected like you are to me or like you are to Dave Taylor where you're a two. You're not directly connected. So your options to communicate with me are different than with Dave Taylor. At least they are until he accepts your invitation tonight. Right. And l let me ask you something. Uh, one of the things that I've bumped up against, uh, I've maintained in a, an electronic address book for just as long as it's been possible, I think. And so there's, you know, there's a lot of people in there. And then you upload, and for po folks who don't know, you, you would upload your electronic address book to LinkedIn and it cross matches to see who you know is already on LinkedIn and then you can also send invitations to people and build your network that way. One of the things I've bumped up against with uh, LinkedIn that you don't have happen with Facebook or, or these or, or non-business networks is that um, if someone says, gee, but I don't know Bob, uh, then LinkedIn gets very, uh, uh, they get very unhappy with that. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, you know, how a guy gets to 28,000. Uh, I've had emails from them periodically saying, stop inviting people you don't know. And I say, I'm not inviting people I don't know. I'm inviting people in my address book who maybe I've interviewed or I've dealt with or something over the years. I guess maybe someone doesn't remember me, but it's not because I don't know them. Yeah, you, you mentioned um, something that, uh, and this, is, this comes up very, very often. It's a very intelligent question, Bob. Back, go, let's go back to 2003 when LinkedIn is architecting their system. You know, the world's mm -hmm. a different place. And, and, and LinkedIn has this picture, which is not an unrealistic picture at all, that their program is, is, is going to be just for kind of networking of people that they kind of know each other. I mean, why would people want to use this as a recruiting tool or a sales tool, which is inherently people you don't know. Recruiting and sales are two markets that are – you know, inherently, I, 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 I tried all my friends. They're all working. i got to go find an employee for that job somewhere else. I don't know a lot of C++ people in Charlotte, but you know what? That's what i got to find. So I'm inherently going to be dealing with people that I don't know. Um, sales reps have already sold everything they can to all their friends. they got to go find new customers. But LinkedIn, you know, I mean, in the process back when they were designing this originally, no one really knew where it was going to go. I don't think they thought – at all that they would be this successful. I don't think there was any plan for this kind of thing. And they kind of stuck to those, to those, those, those early, early principles way beyond when they should have. They should have thrown in the towel and said, you know what, we've got a marketing engine here. We've got a recruiting engine. LinkedIn's biggest product out here, by the way, that they sell, it's a, it's a three-user license that's about 25 grand that recruiters can buy that gives them access to all 65 million records. So in one hand, they want you to keep kind of this tight little network because partly I think they want to sell $25,000 three-user license packages. Don't worry about it, Bob. The, the, the world will get over it. But more and more people know who LinkedIn is now. Those things don't happen quite as much as they used to. When LinkedIn's on the cover of Time magazine, a lot of people who might have thought that a, a LinkedIn invitation was spam are not going to think that way anymore. But what you bring up is the problem that people have when they upload databases. So if I upload a database into LinkedIn and go send a message out to, you know, go to invite them, I can't customize that message. It's a generic message that says invitation to join my network, and then at the bottom says Mike O'Neill on it. They took that feature away. It's a terrible, terrible thing that they did, and they don't seem remorseful about it at all. And by, by dumping your, your email list into LinkedIn and sending it out there, that's not a bad strategy, but, Bob, you got to keep one thing one thing. In mind, you only get 3,000 invites, and frankly, I could upload 75,000 records. I might take a while to upload them, but I've got a list. That's, that's the size of our, our gross list. And I would have a network full of people whose last name begins with A and B, and I'd be done inviting people for the rest of my life. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, Don't that's do that. the answer to my question. No, no, it's a good, good answer to my question. Well, uh, we're just about out of time, and I, I want to let people know that you can order 
Rock the World with Your Online Presence by Mike O'Neill and his partner, Lori Ruff, in great bookstores, or you can order it online at mrmedia.com. And you can learn more about Mike O'Neill on the web at www.iasocialmedia.com. That's solid, iasocialmedia.com. And you can connect with him, of course, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Good, good, good talking to you today. Great, Bob. Nice talking to you, too. And rocktheworldbook.com if you want to know a little bit more about the book. I love going through your Mr. Media site. That is a great site you got there, Bob. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, my pleasure. Good to talk to you. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. And, folks, for more original <laughs> interviews with online rock stars, uh, such as Mike O'Neill, you can uh, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. And you can now hear Mr. Media while you're on the go with Stitcher Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile application. The latest episode of Mr. Media is always available for you there. No syncing needed, no memory wasted. Available for your iPhone, your Palm Pre, Android phones, or your BlackBerry. Downloading is easy. Just go to stitcher.com or check out the App Store for your individual mobile phone. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. Try it. I know it will work for you. If you've got an idea for a guest, uh, email me at bob at andelman.com. And you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or facebook.com slash andelman or send me an invitation on linkedin.com. It's linkedin.com slash Andelman, I think. <laughs> I should have looked. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a piece of your day and spend it with us. Thanks for listening, everybody.